Good morning, everybody. Hey, welcome to this Wednesday, the 20th of March. Hope you're doing well. As uh, we head into uh, the markets today, yesterday is not a bad day on Wall Street. Uh, today looks like it could be a mixed bag. We'll talk about that and more when Dave joins us here in just a few seconds. Before we do that, though, let's not forget, in this world we live in, there are so many things that we have no control over. However, you can take control of your portfolio by knowing the amount of risk you have in your portfolio and the amount of risk you should have in your portfolio. That's why I developed the core retirement design. Give me a call at 863-382-0037 to schedule your core retirement analysis. And with that, we got Dave coming up next. That's MJ there, Michael Jackson, human nature. Speaking of human nature, I've always called it abnormal psychology. So let's check into the human nature that's going on on Wall Street this morning. For something as complicated as they are, I need help. I need Philip Statler from Statler Financial Services. He joins me on the phone this morning. Philip, how are you today? Hey, good morning, Dave. Uh, doing well today. I hope you are too. The the market actually not a bad day yesterday. Um, the question is, can we follow through today? And a lot of that is going to be Jay Paulson. Yeah, yesterday, especially on the NASDAQ, it looked pretty doggone good. But the Dow up 320 points, up eight-tenths of a percent. Standard & Poor's eked its way up to a new all-time record close. We start out the morning at 5178.51. It was up 29 yesterday. And NASDAQ was up over a third of a percent, 1616.79. We're kind of bumping our noses on all-time highs on everything. I think the uh, Dow is only about 39 points away from its record high from a couple of weeks ago. So we've kind of recovered. And now the question is, uh, when they do the dot plots off of the Federal Reserve meeting this afternoon, are they going to hold steady? Are they going to raise rates in a few months? Or are we going to get the three rate cuts that some Wall Street analysts are expecting? And you and I both think they're smoking something. Well, that, that's definitely the the... You know, that's the headline across the, the board is, you know, question mark, three rate cuts or two rate cuts. And 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 I would venture to say uh, three has been off the table as far as I can tell. Um, two is um, if we start to see any upward movement in inflation trajectory, uh, I think two may be off the table too, Dave. And like you said before we went on the air, it, if they continue going up, we may could even see a rate increase if they continue. And that's the part that hits me. I mean, we had two consecutive months of not what we had in mind inflation reports on the consumer and the producer price index. I mean, you get three, you start seeing a trend. At the very least, when you look, a mo look at a moving average, uh, the trend downward has flattened out, even if you take the moving average over a multiple-month span. Uh, I cannot see, uh, were I in charge, and this is a change because I've been a dove for some time as far as interest rates, I cannot see a motivation for decreasing interest rates right now or at least in the next couple of months. And uh, these guys that are saying they still think we might get three, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm wondering what on earth these guys are smoking because uh, if I were on the Federal Reserve Board right now, I certainly wouldn't be looking at a rate decrease anytime soon. Oh, me either, Dave. I just uh, the numbers don't um, don't lead in in that direction. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what the what the rhetoric is that comes out of the meeting today, um, and and we'll have to. Uh, I'm sure they'll be reading in between the lines, trying to determine what they think is uh, the intention of the Federal Reserve. Oh, absolutely. That, that, the only thing auguring in my mind against a rate increase is something you and I were kicking around yesterday on this program, that, you know, it, it, no, the Federal Reserve is an apolitical organization. No, they do operate in a vacuum. They're immune, quote, and unquote, from political pressures. But all of that having been said, there's never been a Federal Reserve chairman in the history of the bank that ever wants to get blamed for throwing a sitting president out of office, regardless of which party they're in. So, uh, yeah, and a great increase in, in the interest rate would certainly not be what Biden would have in mind. So the pressure on Paulson is just going to be utterly intense to try to put the tamps down on any kind of a talk about a rate increase, which, like I said, frankly, right now, if we, if we get three consecutive months of unpleasant inflation news, it would probably be the smart thing to do. It would be. Um, and, but you're right. They're going to be thinking – 
of a lot of different things before they raise rates again. But it, to, to me, if we have another month of uh, increasing inflation, they, they've got to uh, to do something to put a to put a, a halt to it. Absolutely. All of this is going to happen at 2 p.m. this afternoon. The expectation is no changes what's thought. Most Fed watchers are saying June or July is a likely start of cuts. And uh, if you can't tell, Philip and Dave are both saying that should be a load of hooey. Uh, the real color is going to come from Jay Paulson's press conference at 2.30 when he tries to provide a little bit of context to the announcements. And if they can goad him into saying something dumb, uh, the charts could look like a seismograph between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. this afternoon, wouldn't you expect? Uh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, talking about interest rates, the, the Bank of England actually is set to hold rates steady, but they're seeing their inflation start to fall. The lowest it's been in two, two and a half years, I think. So they're actually thinking they may start cutting here shortly in England. Well, it just proves it can be done. Besides, you know, you and I are talking about, you know, Great Britain's been in a bit of a recession, so oh, yeah. they've got a reason to get to more stimulation. Uh, Japan, we mentioned, raised their rates yesterday for their central bank up to a laughably low rate, but still it was at the, it was at the very least an interest, an interest rate hike, indicating at least a tightening of their money supply. You and I were talking before we went on the air about bond rates and uh, mortgage rates. The Mortgage Bankers Association put out their mortgage report today, and as far as the index, uh, down considerably from last year, only off by like 1% from the prior week. Uh, I got to assume that the refinances are going down as mortgage rates have been going up. So holding steady, I guess I'm considering that relatively good news. Uh, yeah, and you know, it, interest rates went up by a little over a tenth of a percent, and uh, so that's going to slow things down. We're getting back up close to seven again, uh, and that uh, applications were 14 percent lower than the same time last year, which makes sense based on on interest rates. So. Yeah, we, we continue to see a slowdown in, in applications right now. Absolutely. And the bond rates are starting to go up. That might be one of the things that will end up uh – That'll end up causing the Federal Reserve to think twice about whether or not they need to raise the interest, r the reference interest rate. Because what, what did you say? The ten year, the ten year Treasury yield is now up to what? Four point four percent. Yep, four point four three percent right now in the thirty year. It's recovering by a little bit. So at the very least, the Fed might be able to look at the federal bond rates and saying, "Oh heck, we don't need to do anything. The market's doing it for us." Well, they could. They could. We'll we'll see. Um... And and maybe that will that will slow things down just because the the treasuries are going up. Absolutely, we can always hope for a little bit. Like I said, I'm still dove but I'm at I'm at the point right now of saying I'm not 100 percent sure a little hawkish wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, reporting companies going on, we're actually starting a kind of a new wave of reports. Uh, you know, I was giggling before we went on the air. I don't know how many people are old enough to remember Big G, Little O, Go with Cheerios. How did General Pil How did General, General Mills do? Well, General Mills uh, came in at a dollar seventeen a share, which was better than the dollar five expected. Revenue was higher than expected as well, and they reaffirmed their full year outlook. So that was some good news coming out of General Mills this morning. Uh, they are up about three point eight percent this morning. They were up one point three yesterday, so not a bad two day run at this point. That really the, is. I I keep reading sidebar articles about how the mainline cereal companies are getting undercut by generics so much they're having trouble selling their core product anymore in the volume they're used to. That's good news for General Mills that they're keeping keeping their core business going. Yeah, it is. It, it is good that uh, that they're able to, to continue to lead the way there. We had uh, Signet Jewelers uh, that came in. They missed uh, their revenue uh, guidance for the – for the quarter, um, and so they're uh, they're trading. Let's see which way they're trading. I got to click two buttons here. Let's see here. There we go. They're oh, they're getting beat up this morning, Dave. Down nine point six percent. Ouch. Did, yeah. did, was there any 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 top line information as to what element of their business went soft on them? It did not. Um, it did not. But they were uh, down substantially, especially in the forecast. The forecast was one point six for this next quarter. Um, and they came in and said they feel like they'll be between 1.4 and 1.5. So, um, yeah, that, that really, Wall Street didn't like that much at all. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, nobody we, likes soft guidance. No, no. Not much else in terms of actual earnings. We did have a couple. Let's mention this one because Chipotle, hey, we've got them here in Highlands County now. So let's uh, let's talk about them for just a minute here. You know, they have been one of those expensive stocks, Dave. I mean, they closed yesterday at $2,797 a share. Holy um, crud. Yeah. So, but, so they have come out and have approved – a 50 to one stock split. That's going to bring the, the, the price of that stock down below uh, $200 a share. And, uh, and so that, uh, that should be some good news for, uh, for, for folks out there make it a little bit cheaper for folks to, uh, to pick up on. And, and people are liking that because it's trading up five and a half percent this morning. You know, you make the, it doesn't change equity value one little bit, but a stock price split does help in the process making a stock look more marketable, doesn't it? It, it does. You know, it makes it a little bit more affordable. I don't know. I'm, I misspoke. It won't be 200 It'll be 400 almost $500 a share. But um, still, I guess that's better than 2900 <laughs> Easy, Easier to swallow. Now, more now affordable. You can at the very least, now you can at least do, do a share of stock for the price for a dinner for four. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe. By the way, just a warning to everybody that drive through with the Chibotle is for web purchased advanced orders only. You can't walk up to the clown's mouth and order something for the drive through. I was told that very peremptorily by somebody on Facebook the other day. Resetting the table here yesterday was a pretty good day for the major indexes. The Dow, as a matter of fact, up eight tenths of a percent. That's pretty doggone good. That sounds like optimism. 45 minutes before we open this morning, what are we looking at? Well, I'm going to say maybe the optimism has waned a little bit, Dave. We got the Dow down a little over a tenth of a percent right now. The S&P 500 is down a tenth of a percent. The NASDAQ 100 is up a tenth of a percent. So everything's uh, really close to the margin there. Uh, we'll have to see how things open up this morning. On the other side, we've got nothing but red ink. Uh, silver's down six tenths of a percent has dropped below 25 to twenty four dollars and ninety seven cents an ounce. Gold's down two tenths at twenty one hundred and fifty five dollars an ounce. And crude oil down one point six six percent, still not where we want it to be at eighty one dollars and thirty six cents a barrel. Easy. One day doesn't make a trend. Let's cross our fingers for two in a row at least before we start getting too cheery, right? <laughs> <laughs> Asian rim markets at the close at 6 a.m. this morning were pretty much up. Uh, the Taiwanese markets were off a little bit in the panic. Chinese markets continued to take buy orders from the government and going up. So it was a pretty good day on the Asian rim market. Europe, on the other hand, is looking at our futures, and they're saying, what uh, They're generally trading down, not catastrophically, but down about seven hundredths of a percent on average across the European community at this hour. Get an idea as to how to make retirement happen. You can't live on Social Security alone for most of us. That means that nest egg got to get protected. How do I find you to get the risk out of my plans? Then give us a call at 863-382-0037 to schedule a core retirement analysis. And then join us this weekend for the Statler Financial Radio Show, 6 a.m. and noon on Saturday, 10 a.m. Sunday morning on Highlands News Talk 730, 95.3 FM. And you and me to mark together again tomorrow morning to tell you what happened with the Fed and what's likely to affect your money here tomorrow. Philip, I'll see you then. All right, man. You have a great day. Thank you, sir. It's 105.7 Light FM and Statler Financial Services. Philip Statler. Do you actually... Hey, folks, again, I want to thank you for joining us today. Have a great day. Join us again tomorrow, same time, same place.